I just want to test the bramble cane that we've split up. I harvested this stuff back in winter, at the end of winter and the beginning of spring. And the danger is that if the plant is growing vigorously, then the bark wood is less likely to adhere to the heartwood when we go and make the basket. But if the plant was dormant, it should stay fast. So I need to do a bit of a test. And we do this because what we don't want to happen is find ourselves six months down the line with our basket and the bark wood separating out from the heartwood when the whole thing's bound up. So I'm going to get this um, cane, I'm going to stick it in this copper pot and subject it really to some quite harsh conditions. So just stick that in there and start getting that nice and warm and hopefully we'll be able to then just lift the bark off of the cane. But there's some clearing up that we have to do. We've got the brushwood from the top of the bramble plants as well as the pith that we've scraped out. And these are all useful materials and they certainly would have been used in the past for a range of different functions. Let's start with the uh, bramble brush. You know, that stuff, you look at it and you think, oh, what could I do with that? But in fact, because it's a hardwood, this stuff actually, okay, it's a hardwood, it will go up. It'll burn really, really well. And actually this makes excellent firewood at least it's really good for starting fires and I tend to use that stuff to make these little what's sometimes called nickies they're like small faggots of bramble wood and this thing will go up like a rocket um, and certainly on a cold winter's night if you come in and you want to get the fire started quickly one of these things is an ideal way of doing that and the term nicky actually comes from southern england uh, the new forest the traveler community there used to make these things called nickies and they used to sell them by the roadside and they're really useful for getting ovens hot quickly so if you've got a small bread oven or a clum oven these things are absolutely ideal so don't waste your bramble brush this is perfect stuff for starting fires really, really quickly. Um, the other thing we've got, of course, is the pith. Um, and not just the pith, we've also got the sort of scrapings, if you like, from the, the edge of the cane, where we've planed it down and stripped it. We've shaved off little bits of the barkwood, or rather the heartwood and the barkwood, as well as the pith. And all of this stuff is really quite useful, but it's mixed up at the moment. And I've got some from an earlier round of cane that I did here. And the best way that you can split out here the pith from all of that really, really fine wood is just to run your hands round like so. Just run your hands round, almost like you're sort of mixing a crumble. And what tends to happen is the small bits of wood collect up like that and they leave the pith and you get this ball of material. And I have to say, this is arguably one of the best tinders that money can buy. I've got a lighter in here and we'll just give you an example just of how quickly this stuff goes up. If I just do that, look, really, really quickly that stuff goes up. Okay, so this is absolutely perfect if you're starting your fires from scratch, especially on a cold, wet day and you need that flame quickly. But the pith here, well, now this is interesting, okay, because this stuff doesn't burn as well. It really doesn't. Um, it burns slowly and of course it's very spongy and that means it's very good for soaking up other burnable materials. So what you can do is you can make up a mix. I've got a little um, stove here. And what I tend to do with this thing, okay, is to put in a couple of ingredients that we can use to mix in with the pith to make a really fantastic little uh, fire lighter. So the first thing I've got is some um, wax. Here, this is uh, wax sourced from my own beehives. Um, it's a great material, wax, beeswax. I, I, arguably, I think in the past, people were keeping bees, yes, for the honey, but it's almost as important, if not in some cases, more important to have wax. So we've got some uh, beeswax there. And the other thing I've got as well, is some uh, linseed oil, okay? And this stuff, um, remarkable, you don't, you know, linseed oil is quite pricey. You can use uh, old engine oil, any sort of oil really is really good just to cut with the wax, just to make it that little bit more liquefied so that it soaks into the pith. So we'll get some of our wax into here. Okay, so a nice generous load of wax in here. Let's get all of that in there. 
lovely and some linseed oil as well and this stuff oh that just smells absolutely gorgeous that really does okay so we're just going to pour some of that in here this has got really hot this little um kettle which is absolutely ideal and it's cast iron if you if you're working with wax you want a nice big thick heavy kettle and the reason why is it keeps its heat the danger on a really cold day is that what happens is you, as soon as you take that kettle off of the heat what it tends to do is it starts to cool down immediately and that starts to cool the wax inside so if you've got a nice warm kettle it's ideal for when you're working with um, the wax now I'm just gonna put the lid on that okay and what we'll do is we'll just stick that on the back of the stove there we go well, that shouldn't take long till it's melted down nicely and we'll just clear the decks here and just while we're waiting for that cane to really soften up I'll get out my little box of combustible tricks over here and we'll have a look at some of this fire lighting material uh, that I've made earlier okay I've got a little makeshift stove here as well let's get that into there and this stuff <clears throat> Once you've mixed the wax and the linseed in with the pith, what you end up with is something that looks a little bit like a flapjack. Okay, not nearly as edible, certainly not as edible as my mother's flapjacks. Um, but this stuff, once we get it lit, you'll see that it takes a while to go up, but it actually burns really well. And you can hear that just fizzing away there. And what the pith is doing really is it's serving as a matrix just to hold the wax and the linseed oil so that it burns. It's almost like a wick, if you like. And we'll just put, there we I'll just get that going. Going quite nicely. And the great thing about beeswax, especially when you mix it with oil, is it burns really nice and brightly. And it doesn't have that horrible smell sometimes that sort of petrochemical wax can have. I'm almost certain actually that traditional beekeeping, okay it was about the honey, it was about having the sweetness, but I think it was almost as important, if not in some cases more important, for, uh, for hives to produce wax. Because wax was really important, especially to the church. They wanted those candles on the altar burning nice and brightly in the same way this is. Look at that. Okay, and we've got a little cowl there, so we'll just plonk that on there. And off goes our little burner. So we've got a nice bit of light coming out of this. But what we've also got is some heat as well. That's really, really hot at the top of there. Okay, you can actually use that to solve things, to heat things up, okay? So let's just stick that over in the corner. Let that burn and let's just check on our cane. Okay, so certainly the water is getting nice and hot. Okay, well that's certainly had long enough to soften up. Let's just see if we can strip some of this bark off. And this is a useful process because every now and again you get a, a cane where the bark just won't lift off. And that, that can be a good thing because that can mean you're not gonna spend hours trying to strop this stuff off and you can just make the basket with the bark still on the cane. And I quite like that because what it gives your basket is this nice authentic sort of rustic feel and if you look at this cane here what you'll see is through the soaking process is you've got this wonderful sort of almost like a leopard skin effect on the cane and baskets made with this I think can have a merit however if this bark comes off easily what we'll probably end up doing is taking it all off because the risk is if the bark is already separating from the heartwood when the basket gets wet or damp or starts to get used what happens is it starts separating out when it's in the basket and then the whole basket can start to come apart. <coughs> so let's just see how we get on with this. It's a pretty coarse bit of cane we've got here. I'm just gonna put a um, chopping board on there and it's a very, very simple technique really. You'll know when the bark wants to come away, okay? And I can already see with this bit here, that's already come away there. And all we really want to do is just keep our fingers nice and close to the work here and use that thumb. Here we are, look, we've got a little bit there. Okay, nice and close to the work. Okay, and you might 
want to use a pair of gloves with this because if you're anything like me, you spend far too much time at a computer, you've got lovely soft hands, and actually after about sort of 50 bits of cane, you, it can really take its toll on your hands. So you might want a pair of gloves, but you can already see that this is coming away really quite nicely. I'm not having to do a lot of the work. Again, we've allowed soaking and the water to do the work. So here we go, look, there we are, lovely. Just running that through there. We don't always have the choice when you go to the hedgerow to pick out the perfect material. And I, you know, that is the beauty about this material. It's not like going down to builders merchants and being able to order up sort of 200 meters worth of beautifully factory produced material. You really have to work with what the hedgerow gives you. And I think the net result of this whole process here is that we are not gonna get that bark off too easily. Okay, that's the underlying cane. That's quite a good bit of material, it's a bit coarse. To be honest, I've worked with better cane, but I'm taking some of the rough and ready stuff. So let's just bind that one up again. And we'll give it one last go. Let's have another go, stick that on there. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so let's see how this one comes away. So let's just get the end here. And sometimes if you need to, just, oh look, there we are. That's just come away quite nicely, that one. Oh, I can see, look, there we are. Just, just come away completely there. So that's a good sign for this bit of cane, but still a little bit. The, I think the jury's out really on this one. I, I have to say, I'm still feeling like this, that, that lovely leopard skin effect that you've got on there. I almost look at that and I'm thinking, actually, I, quite, I would quite like that on my basket, that sort of mottled effect. And given that this stuff is just not gonna come away easily, makes me think that actually when this stuff was cut the plant was still relatively dormant still relatively early in the year it's not quite got into growing so you know as it's growing it sort of starts separates out its fibers to reach up for the light and it's at that point actually the bark comes away quite easily from the heartwood and i think i've cut this just early enough in the year so that the plant isn't growing and as a consequence i am not going to get this bark off so I think that's <clears throat> made the decision for me. So what I'd probably go for, I think in the case of this basket, and you can make your own call on this, is I'll probably go for a basket that actually has the bark still on the heartwood, just to give it that lovely authentic look. But if you do soldier on with this, and it really depends on the kind of bramble you pick and when you pick it, you can bark strip and you'll end up with a cane that looks something like this and you get a nice clean finish. So if I were to pick out a couple of baskets here, for example, this one, okay, you can see the cane on this one is actually been bark stripped and it gives it a nice uniformity across the basket. However, if we look at this basket, this one, we've left the bark on here and it has its own merits, okay? This is a nice, lovely, soft rye straw basket, and you can see it has its merits. So I think on the strength of that, I think what we're probably gonna go for is a cane that has its bark still on, which does save us really quite laborious process. So it won't be long now before we're actually starting to make our basket.